So A R D, as in board of directors. So it gives me immense pleasure to welcome you to the interview series of Mentor My Board, Boardroom Talks. Boardroom is a place where fortunes of great companies are written. Hence, in the pursuit of bringing best practices of boardrooms and best practices followed by eminent directors, independent directors, women directors of corporate India and international boardrooms to you. We have come out with interview series with directors, business leaders who have been guiding and acting as torch bearers for the corporates. Let me also introduce Mentor My Board to you. We, Mentor My Board, are board mentors with experience of more than three years in mentoring directors, whether independent directors, women directors, business owners. We are on a mission to transform Indian corporate directors and boardrooms and create community of one lakh directors by 2027. I mean, I mean, that's big. Sir, don't smile. We aspire to do so. With Divya and us around, I hope we, we do that. We help directors, foreign directors in India who are continuously looking to sharpen their boardroom and leadership skills, upgrade their knowledge on better governance through best board practices, help the companies they serve on to grow faster ethically. It is said that boards are the incubation wherein fortune of companies is written. So let's understand from... Mr. Robin Banerjee about boardroom journey and best practices that he has been following. Other than that, he, he can share everything under the sun, which he feels will inspire and motivate aspiring uh, board members better. So welcome, sir. It is, it is actually um, uh, especially, uh, 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 this moment is special to me. I'll tell you why. Robin sir was one of the mentors when I was doing my uh, IOD certification. So to sit on the same uh, forum and chat with a mentor always is, is a special moment. Uh, I have to introduce Robin sir because I would introduce him as a very humble, modest, grounded, spirited, warm, friendly human being as a, as a human aspect of it. And his accolades are miles long. I would like to share that too with the people who are here. Sir is the Managing Director of Capri Hands India Limited. Earlier, he has served in several multinational global corporations in senior leadership positions, including Hindustan Liver as GM, Arcelor Mittal Germany as MG, Thomas Cook, Executive Director, SR Steel Executive Director, Suzalon Energy Group, CFO, and Member of the Board. Sir is a Chartered Accountant, Cost Accountant, Company Secretary, and a Master in Commerce. Sir is the recipient of several business awards, including the recent Rotary International Award for Ethical Businessman of the Year 1819. He is Chairman, Confederation of Indian Industry, Western India, for Finance and Taxation Committee for 2021. He is a member of the Board of Studies for Independent Directors, Indian Institute of Corporate Affairs, Government of India. Apart from being a whole-time director in a listed company, he is also an independent director in three other companies. Robin sir has authored three books on indirect taxation, including one on Modbat, which went into 10 editions. He has recently authored two best-selling business nonfiction books, Who Cheats and How, and Who Blunders and How. These are the official accolades, milestones uh, associated with Robin sir. And in the coming hour, we will get to know Robin sir, his viewpoints as a director, as a human being, as a person who in boardroom creates destinies. So, sir, I would like to start by requesting you to share a few bits about your board journey. Thank you, Swati. <clears throat> it's always, um, it's not good to talk about myself, but now that you have asked this question, um, it all started about 20 years back. Um, after having worked for Hindustan Unilever for almost about two decades, I left Hindustan Unilever to go abroad and joined ArcelorMittal in Germany. Perhaps, as you know, it's currently the largest steel company in the world. So when I went to Germany, I joined them as their CFO in the German operations. Within one year, I was promoted as a managing director of the German company, which means that I became a board member first not in India, but outside India. Having been the board then for five years, I decided to come back to my motherland for whatever reason. 
and joined the board in India and uh, in the in the company called Thomas Cook. Thomas Cook those days was a German company and it used to be owned by Lufthansa. And that's why they appointed me as a board member looking after Southeast Asia. Having worked in Thomas Cook for two years, I went back to Steel and joined as a board member in SR Steel. In SR Steel, I was there for two years and then I joined as the group CFO and the member of the board of Suzlon Energy, which at that point of time was the third largest wind energy company in the world. But while I was in Suzlon, I was also in the boards of almost 12 country boards, which included Australia, China, of course, India, Canada, US, Mexico. Um, having, having then I moved on and I joined this current company, Caprihens India Limited, as a whole time managing director. And that's now last about lasting for about eight years. So broadly speaking, it's about almost two decades that I have been in the boards of various companies, mostly as executive directors. In the last five or six years, in fact, I think it's about seven years, I've also joined other companies as independent directors. And uh, so I have been able to see the going ons what happens inside the boardroom, both as an executive director, which is a whole time director, and also as an independent director, where I'm supposed to be impartial and not citing any side whatsoever. That's the short journey um, story I have. I would rather say that's a, a accumulation of international knowledge of boards. One question that popped up in my mind, you said you started with a foreign board. And the general perception that people have that the way we function in India is always different from the way we function abroad. So does it apply to boards also? It does. Um, actually, it is not in terms of foreign or India. It is the ethic system of the organization. Okay. Okay. And it is an ecosystem that the organization follows. There okay. could be boards which does not follow ethics abroad and as much as in India. Okay. And there could be as good companies in India who follows complete ethics and does not perhaps follow another company abroad. So it's not the organization, sorry, it's not the country, country. but it's the ethics of the organization which works when it comes to governance issues of boards. Okay, okay. Uh, if Robin sir is standing outside a boardroom and watching Robin sir inside the boardroom, what is that Robin sir is uh, seeing himself do there? What, what are you doing there? See, when I approach a boardroom, which obviously happens, one, as an independent director in three companies or as an executive director in one company, the first thought which comes to my mind is, what am I going to contribute during the next few hours? Wonderful, sir. Wonderful. Therefore, it is very important to know what has happened. If you're an independent director, and let me talk about that a little bit more, because that's perhaps is the story a little hazy. If you're an independent director, Normally, you are expected to join a board meeting once in three months, which right. is four times a year. That's the statutory requirement, and that is what most companies follow. So when you join a board meeting for once in three months, obviously, you're out of the work for 89 days, only to understand on the 90th day what's happening. Therefore, before the board meeting, is important to go through the pieces of papers which have been submitted or the information which has been submitted seven days, hopefully seven days before the board meeting starts. So first requirement is that am I prepared for the board meeting, which means have I gone through the documents which have been submitted? Number two, the thought is, what is it that I'm going to contribute? It is very important to keep that in mind because if you go inside a board meeting blank, chances are that the contributions will also be less. Number three, it is important to understand the sector in which the company operates. I, I am in four different companies. One sector is plastics. Another is garments, another is steel, another is FMCG. So it moves from one place to another. And therefore, sometimes it is important to understand the sector. The bottom line is, it is important that when one stands outside the boardroom and one is entering there, the mindset should be, I shall be positive. I shall be contributing. And yes, I'm in the know of things as much as I should know. So if I, if I uh, uh, say what, what you're telling us is that we have to take responsibility for the value that is expected to be derived for, from us as directors. 
whether it's independent or whether it's in any capacity. The fact that the name director means you run the company. Yeah. Now the director running the company means that you could be running it operationally means every day, which means you are an executive board member or if you're a non-executive board member, you don't run it every day, but you run it strategically. So once in a quarter, you examine with the management team, are they strategically in the right way and the right, in the right, right journey? So very important for any board member is, one, of course, to understand the sector in the organization of which he or she is a member, board member. Number two is that to to think forward, this forward looking, strategically guiding the organization is very important, especially when you're an independent board member. Wonderful, sir. Uh, taking it forward, what are your thoughts on uh, today's board effectiveness? A lot, of, uh, a lot has been written about boards and its effectiveness. What are your thoughts on that? Effectiveness of board is a very very uh, a question which is very difficult to answer. There are extremely good and effective boards. There are highly obnoxious and ineffective boards. Okay. And that's the unfortunate tra tra trouble. So this unfortunate issue of, issue of boards which don't function well, put the black, black mark on the good boards. For instance, some of us may be thinking that if I become a board member, it is very risky, but they kya ho raha hai. Now, let me give you an example. Some examples and these examples I'm giving because this is all in the public domain. Think of a situation that is a company called Carvey Shareholding. The Carvey Brokers. Carvey Brokers was just found about a few months back that they, Carvey, what is a share broking company, stock broking company? They buy shares on your behalf. So this company was buying shares on, your, on, our, on, the, on our behalf. However, they were pledging those shares, not telling their clients that they have pledged and borrowing the money. Just imagine I have bought the shares through Carvey Stockbroking Company. They are supposed to hand over the shares to me or, or keep them on account on my account without doing anything with the shares. But they, what they have done, they have pledged it onwards to a bank and borrowed it. What did they do with the borrowed company? They took speculative position on real estate companies. Now think, and I am wondering, what would have happened to the board members, independent board members, were they not aware of this was happening? They were blissful and ignorant of this going on? Or did they not ask the right questions for, for a long time? Think of a situation, what would have happened? Let's say the PMC bank, the cooperative bank, which just went bust. They were also board. They were independent directors. They were also other directors. What is their response? Did they not know that that particular bank was lending 70% of their borrowings to one single group? Was there no MIS on that matter where you can only invest, only lend 15% of your, of your borrowed money? You cannot invest 70%. So they took complete exposure on one of the group companies, which happens to be belonging to the chairperson, next chairperson of the company. And right. therefore, therefore, my question here is, what were the directors doing? Now, these are the examples in the public domain, where in my view, the directors did not play the role what they're supposed to. But look at the other sector of the company. Companies, there are marvelous organizations where the boards function so very well. And so when the boards function well, you would also see the company is also doing well. Think of Mahindra Mahindra, how wonderfully the organization does. Think of uh, the Aditya Birla, how wonderfully the organization does. Of course, everyone talks about Tata, as goes without saying. Uh, so the question here is that what is the effectiveness of the board is a very, uh, it, it's a question which depends upon the board as a whole. If I am in a board, I would try to see if, if I or you in a board, we should try to see that we are striving for excellence. We are striving for good governance. We are striving to be ethical. However, if you enter a board where the ecosystem itself is unethical, the ecosystem itself is to cut corners, it is very difficult then to have your way or how have your weight when the majority wants to think otherwise. So it is not an easy one to hand handle. It's not an easy one to answer, but the ecosystem of a board is something which is 
which is which is which actually matters in terms of effectiveness of effectiveness of the board wonderfully wonderfully explained sir and now to the i think the term which is like glorifying my presence and divya's presence here is women directors women independent directors women directors whichever way you want to take it my question is the uh, presence of women directors independent directors in boardrooms uh, is it about sensibilities or skills and what would you tell us how to go about it there are two stories of women directors the first story is a woman in the board makes a huge difference and in my view the biggest difference they make is they make the men behave properly <laughs> that's a good I'll remember that. All the women directors aspiring would remember that. <laughs> well, the moment a lady is inside the boardroom or in a room, okay. we the men first will be will dress properly and come, <laughs> and then everything else follows. So this is okay. a very important aspect of changing the ecosystem of a board. Okay. Number two, it is known all over that a woman mostly thinks little different. it's a fact they do you all do think differently i'm not saying that's good or bad but it's a fact that difference a differential opinion or something different adds value to an organization hmm. number 3 if 50% of our humanity is women why shouldn't the board have 50% representation what's wrong with it that's natural to happen that's humanity and therefore it is your it is the woman's birthright to have a 50% share and not one third or one tenth or one fifth no i don't agree there has to be 50% share you will perhaps ask then why it is it not 50% share there the 50% share is not there because the majority who today the men are are not allowing that so called continued minority to take that 50% share so it is our responsibility we the men who have not allowed women to enter the boardrooms and the last one i have i have figured out in my experience that many a times the entrepreneur or the chairperson feels that if i appoint a woman or a lady will she be able to understand our strategy will she be able to understand our ethos hello if a man can understand your strategy and your ethos why wouldn't a woman understand your strategy and ethos the problem here is that if a lady says no to something which you are not wanting to do or what should not do it will be very difficult for you to say no no i want to still do in do it is wrong it is like my mother when my mother is to say don't do it i wouldn't do it although i would override my father it is very easy to say father don't worry but mother mom no and that's how life is oh wow that that's a new take i always assume that women directors uh, probably in the boardrooms whatever little a uh, research i did that uh, you know men just don't want to be disciplined at home in office and boardrooms too you have added a new perspective by by adding this angle thank you so much so going forward uh, uh, independent director uh, uh, most of us uh, who are listening to this and our forum we are focused on independent director more uh, we have a perception even i had one till i had the Uh, privilege of having chats with you that independent director's journey is all roses no thorns i mean i am independent so i am independent of everything that happens would you want to decode this uh, perception that independent directors carry with them mm. let me tell the bad news first okay. most, most independent directors are not independent <clears throat> okay okay because the independent directors are appointed by the chairperson or the entrepreneur the independent directors especially in india are not appointed by asking for applications and then picking up the best applicant when the company appoints a production manager or a general manager or a vice president there are applicants and hopefully the most suitable applicant gets the job why should yeah. and why doesn't it happen in case of independent directors and today the situation is independent directors are appointed because the chairperson or the entrepreneur knows him or her and the moment you know him or her you are a buddy the moment you are a buddy you are not likely to be against going against him or her and therefore tu tu me me chalu i scratch your back you scratch mine where is the independence 
True. Well said. Well said. So this is the dichotomy which the boards, many boards, I wouldn't say all boards, but many boards suffer from. There are two issues there for coming. One, the entrepreneur or the chairperson perhaps is not comfortable with a lady coming in and asking questions because that's his or her mindset. That's the mindset of many men, unfortunately, we have in our world. That so-called dominating personality, we say, which is all to my mind nonsense. Number two, unless you are a buddy, and it is easy for having a buddy of a man for a man chairman, because then you can drink with him or with him in the night and so on and so forth, the drinking buddy. It is so Play much- Play golf easy. over the weekend, right? Play golf That's over why the weekend. Can, why not every, every evening? <laughs> <laughs> so, see, there is, unfortunately, the, the ecosystem or the current system is such that the, the independent director is appointed because he or she is known to the powers that be. And the moment you know him or her, the matter of independence, quote unquote, does it ap apply all the time? Many a times not is, is the unfortunate truth. So uh, it, is, it is not all roses for independent directors. Do they have to spread for the thorns also. To therefore go a little forward that many a times uh, uh, people or viewers may be asking, then should I become an independent director at all? Yeah. And, and is it worthwhile? Uh, True. My question, my um, answer with that is, yes, it is worthwhile. Because the moment you're an independent director, there are three or four advantages. One advantage is gives you prestige. And number two, it, it gives you the opportunity to discuss an organization strategy. Third, of course, who doesn't want money? So there'll be some sitting fees also. You will get some money. So there are advantages. Does it come with big risks? Uh, I don't think so. Because if, if an independent director is not directly involved in any fraudulent practice of the organization, then the independent director cannot be hauled up. Contrary to some people who say and television uh, makes comment that Companies Act 2013 has made independent directors responsible, it is incorrect. Time and again it has been held that independent director up comes and ad addresses the company only once in a quarter he or she is not exposed to the day-to-day -day running of the organization. And therefore, if the management team or the executive directors have some, done some hanky-panky, then independent directors were not in the know, and therefore they will not be respond, held responsible. So as long as an independent director is not getting involved in the fraudulent or other inappropriate or unethical practices, I am firmly of the opinion that there is no problem whatsoever of, of the independent directors. And in fact, there are upsides because the social prestige and placement and the satisfaction of being a director overrules the little trouble maybe sometime you need to take because you have to appoint, you have to go once a quarter, you have to read some pieces of papers. Once in a while, you may have to help the management with the questions and so on and so forth. But the advantages are significantly more. Before I go to the next question, something you said while you were uh, uh, chatting now, which caught my attention, you said that uh, like we apply for vice presidents, CEOs, and various other positions, uh, independent directors uh, should also do. So mentor my board is an effort in, in, in that direction. So just this is, this is on a personal level, I would, I would want to know before we go to the next uh, professional question. So the vision of mentor my board is exactly to do that, to make it more streamlined, to make directories and make an impact in a more professional, organized manner. How do you view the effort of uh, Mentor My Board in this space? Now that you have said it's not there and uh, Divya Ji has created a vertical which is kind of aligning with your thought. What is your take on Mentor My Board's efforts of aligning it into a more professional zone? The good news is organizations like Mentor, Board, Mentor by Board is, has, has got now a fantastic opportunity in front of them. The government has changed the rule of becoming an independent director. Till 1st of November, 2019, a director could be appointed, called by the chairman and said, would you like to become an independent director? Banja, <laughs> but no more. Come 1st of December, 2020, no more. If a person has more than 10 years of directorship experience or he, has, he or she has been a KMP, which is called key managerial personnel, 
then you are eligible automatically to join a board. If not, then that person has to pass or qualify a, a test, a self-assessment test. And the test is not as easy as it seems to be. So what will happen is come December 2020, 2020 is, that is this year, six months from today, unless the persons have qualified in that examination, that test, self-assessment test, he or she is not qualified to become an independent board member. Therefore, willy-nilly, come December 2020, there will be a list of people who are eligible to become a board member. Mm. So this is a good starting point for mentor and board type of organization. Mm. The second, second is now think of you are sitting in December 2020 or January 2021. I need a board member because one of my board member had to resign because he or she did not pass that qualification. Now I need a board member. One, I can either call my friend, which will continue. Alternatively, I will go to a, to a data bank, which, which will help me to now choose a board member who is from my industry, who has the background which I'm looking for. So the starting point therefore comes to maintain that list of board members who are now qualified. In that, I'm sure mentor my board can play a very active role in explaining to the so-called future chairpersons and boards that I can give you a name. Okay, you are looking for a board member with right. let's say 15 years of experience. I have a name right. of 10 people. Now you choose from this. Right. So as ecosystem is now going to get, in my view, get ready and prepared for which was not there earlier. So this is a great contribution which organization of uh, AVMM Thank can definitely work towards. Thank you, sir. Thank you for uh, being kind enough to uh, you know, say such nice words. And uh, I would like to also know in the current you know, situation, what is going on, the new normal, uh, upskilling is the keyword in all directions. What about upskilling of the boardrooms? Uh, uh, you, you, you believe, you feel it is required, upskilling of the boardrooms. And, and the second part of the question is, what little uh, knowledge I have, I, I believe that virtual presence of a board member is limited as of now. Do you see the government tweaking that legislation to make it all virtual in coming days? Or what's your take on it? So the first is reskilling of the board members, then the virtualization yeah. of board meetings or board members' contributions. In the reskilling, <clears throat> the fact that Companies Act has now made compulsory that people who are in the independent board must either have a 10 years board experience or must qualify that self-assessment test automatically makes people needs to be upskilled. And people or people who does not know Companies Act, does not the balance sheet, does not know profit and loss account, does not know secretarial practice, they will not be able to qualify that exam anymore. So my humble submission to all the aspirant independent directors who do not have 10 years or more experience, please do upskill yourself and go to the IICSI, which is Indian Institute of Corporate Affairs, and try to learn the material which is there so that you can appear for the exam and immediately you get not only upskilled, but you also get reskilled. So <laughs> this is really nearly by statute itself, it will happen. So this is number one. In the case of upskilling or reskilling, there are board members who are more than 10 years, so they don't have to appear for that exam, but they need to continue to qualify, continue to uh, uh, contribute to the board meetings. Once my, my take is, once the board or a chairperson will see that these so-called upskilled people are making more contributions, people who are then have the passed the test of IICA, which is Indian Institute of Corporate Affairs, maybe there will be a pull and push for the rest of the directors to also be as good as them. So by peer pressure, they may try to becoming like, like to make them upskill. But the fact of the matter is, the board as a whole and the organization as a whole have to now reskill and upskill because in the post-COVID situation, the world has changed. The world has completely changed. Just imagine if you were running an airlines company and the board of airlines company, the airlines is sick. So what will the board do? If the board is not reskilled and upskilled, they wouldn't even be able to think through what the board should do. 
let's assume you are a member of the board of a restaurant organization and people are not going to restaurants anymore. Should the board not be able to think as to what is it that you should do with all the skills which you have, the chefs which you have, uh, and all the, all the um, capabilities which you have, what is it that we should do to make the new business? So COVID in my view, the COVID-19 in my view, is will force the management team and the board to think differently. And this differently thinking will also happen and come from being upskilled and reskilled. In short, I believe the boards have to reinvent themselves to survive and flourish in the post-COVID era. The business as usual is unlikely to happen anymore. Even if you're in healthcare sector, you say that I'm in healthcare sector, everything's hunky-dory, everyone means, needs a medicine. No, I will have to upskill myself to say, wow, can I, healthcare sector is fine, but let me get to the post-COVID healthcare sector. Can I now invent a medicine, just what they are trying to do, or a, or a vaccination for helping COVID? That's what many organizations, there are 100 companies which are now running to invent a vaccination. That board, I'm trying to think what mental power, perhaps I hope they have, to direct the management to do something which will change the mankind's future forever. So this is as regards reskilling and upskilling is concerned. As regards board meetings or boards coming virtually, it is definitely going to happen already. The government of India has allowed board meetings to take place and AGMs to take place through so-called webinars. And if the social distancing norms continue, which I think will continue for the next two years, I hope I'm wrong because this is not something which we should have, but assuming that it goes on for two years, as long as this vaccination is not invented, the, all over the world, board meetings will continue to my mind through webinars only. Physical meetings, in my view, are at least one year away, if not more. But I hope I am wrong. I <laughs> hope a vaccination comes sooner and the world becomes as normal as it was before March 2020. Wonderful, wonderful perspective, sir. And my last question would be a very simple one. With your experience and expertise, three or five things you would tell every upcoming director to follow, to emulate, to be careful about. So I would rather say to do and not to do list for an aspiring director in current uh, situations. Are three, five, seven choices yours to do and not to do list. Um, for a board member, a board member is just not a management team member. A board member is something to whom the management team reports to. Therefore, the primary requirement in the mental makeup is ethics, honesty, and integrity. If a person is not honest and is not having that integrity of purpose, you are not supposed to be a board member at all. You are in the wrong space. And that's the first requirement. The second requirement is knowledge. Knowledge here, I mean to say that you don't have to interpret Gita. No, that's not the knowledge you are looking for. The knowledge in terms of with the sector and the business the, the, in which you are a board member, you should know a fair bit of it so that you can guide and direct the management. You should not go to the board meeting and be blank and hoping the management is going to do the right thing. If you don't know the industry, you cannot contribute. So the board member must understand the industry. And if he or she was not exposed to that, he or she must know it and start contributing. Number three, a board member needs to motivate the management. It's a motivation they need to do. A board member is also an HR manager. <clears throat> Very important. HR manager's job is not only to recruit and train, but HR manager's job is also to motivate. And one of the tasks of a board member is can he or she motivate others to perform, especially in the post-COVID era. This is very, very important. Number three, number four, the board member, because he's ethical, he's knowledgeable, and he's also a motivator, should be able to ask the right questions during the board. If, if the management is challenged from time to time, actively and positively, 
the management also starts working better that i need to be prepared for all these questions which will be asked it is very important for the management to understand so the management to understand the board is not a buddhu board a board which comes and asks questions so i must be prepared to do so right ask the right question and the last one if you find there is a governance issue that there is some hanky panky going on you should have the, the courage to say i don't agree to it i wouldn't say that the board mem then member should resign and go away that doesn't help if you resign they will continue to do it so you should be part of the system be there and protest and make that governance rectified first time what you will have to do say please put my min no, name in my minute saying i did not agree the moment the management of the board the executive board understands that he or she will write his name as not agreeing that means i cannot do something wrong so willy nilly what happens your first ethical practice becomes your last step to say that you will be able to drive the board towards ethical and governance good governance this is what i would suggest to do so i think Wonderful. ethics Wonderful. knowledge uh, motivator ask the right questions and understand on the ball on the governance you would be the ideal board member <laughs> anywhere in the world thank you so much sir it's been such an empowering uh, time we had and i would request divya to Uh, join us and ask any questions that has been coming to her mind after whatever she has heard in the last couple of uh, minutes divya you need to un unmute yourself yeah in yeah. fact uh, thank you robin sir it has been wonderful interaction listening both of you and i'm sure uh, this interaction would re really really help a lot of new directors who aspire to be there are a lot of professionals who aspire to be independent directors and and as the government has also brought in the examination the proficiency test which is going to make sure that we all as new generation enter, uh, you know uh, the directors are able to contribute to the best and and these insights what you have shared will really really help the directors to be on track when they are performing their duties as the director <laughs> absolutely wonderful uh, you know uh, journey to listen you today and your experiences so thank you so much so one thing which i have been observing in you know, over a period of last two years and i've been reading in the newspapers more than 200 independent directors are resigning so uh, you know if you can just throw some light on that that uh, uh, how uh, you know this is happening or what government has been taking action on this so yes let me tell you out of 200 independent directors actually 168 to be precise is the number up yes. to march because that's the number the government has published after that is covid no number has come in out of this so called 170 let us round it up 125 resigned because they were they became old okay yes. <laughs> okay so that's an opportunity for the new of people course, to join in so wow. have, i'll tell you another 20 have resigned because they thought that i will not pass the exam better to resign before that oh. okay So okay. people have resigned Except not because it was risky. People have resigned for their own little purpose, which they were not. They were not being fulfilled. So okay. no one, in my view, maybe five or six or seven would have resigned where they found that they are not in sync with the management or the owner. Where perhaps there was an ethical issue and they did not want to continue. But it is a minority of the cases which has happened. This is official number. You can go to Google and figure it out. What I said is correct. <laughs> okay, so that I think that's a wonderful opportunity which gets wonderful, created. wonderful opportunity for a budding, aspiring, uh, aspiring yes, directors. Yes, absolutely. excellent. Thank you so much, and uh, yes, uh, over to you, Dr. Swati, for the closing remarks. Thank you for being here. Uh, from my end thank you uh, dr swati for being uh, here oh, and my pleasure thank you. i think i need and, to and, thank and, you know, these interactions and sure these interactions and the best practices in the boardroom will really help all of us because now i have been also appointed as a independent director and now we i i, I can really feel we have to congratulate us sir thank you thank you, thank you, thank you so director. much thank you so now i i really realize that it how important it is for independent director to be uh, uh, absolutely involved into the board processes when the person is in the board room and and it becomes really really very important that you are completely involved in that meeting your contribution your participation is very very important so uh, wonderful insights thank you so much over to you dr swati 
I would only say, Robin, sir, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, the takeaways for me as, a, as an aspiring uh, independent director, uh, women independent director, the takeaway is uh, it's as professional a job as being a CEO. We need to make sure that our mindset is knowledge driven. And like you said, the core competency of what we have as, as professionals are the core competencies that we have to carry as an independent director. And one myth that you cleared, thankfully, I'm, I'm highly thankful to you, is it's not, it's not all bed of roses. There are thorns too. So we need to have the right shield and the right ammunition and arms to deal with situations as they arise. So thank you so much, sir. Humbled, humbled by your modesty and your knowledge. Thank you once again. Thank you and the team of mentor my board for giving me this opportunity thank you sir thank, thank you thank you sir and uh, i would like to tell the audience uh, you know who's listening us uh, live so please uh, be tuned every friday we are going to come out with a wonderful series of of the boardroom talks wherein we are going to invite uh, wonderful people uh, like Robin sir and uh, you know uh, other eminent directors on the Indian boardrooms who have been in this journey of board practices and and uh, I'll, I'll just tell you one you know Chinese proverb which says that the fish rots at its head. So if if the Indian uh, when we talk of uh, the frauds what have been happening uh, or we have been listening, it's it's always the top management which is involved. So if if the management or the if the top uh, board of directors are driven ethically, as Robinson rightly said, that ethics is very, very important very. for the uh, businesses and the and the boardrooms. So, uh, uh, if they are, you know, involved in the greed or all such uh, means, then definitely the organizations tremble. And if they have been the best, uh, you know, ethically practicing as uh, on the business terms, the uh, businesses definitely flourish. So, uh, thank you uh, once again and do join us on every Friday for the boardroom talks and boardroom series. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank Robin. you so much yes. and stay tuned. Thank you. Stay tuned. Thank, thank you. you, Robin, sir. Have a wonderful weekend all. Thank you. Thank you.